brief time in Cuba, and we had a great time. Really, the Lord richly blessed. We were there for the conference of, of assemblies. There were at least six assemblies represented at the conference, and uh, it was a marvelous time of, uh, of renewing contact with those dear brethren who have their own very specific challenges there in, in that uh, Atlanta, Cuba. And uh, since then, we're getting almost daily updates on Facebook and pictures of their Christmas program and, and good things like that. So it, it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing that ties and bind us together in the family of God. Wherever that might be, how many different assemblies are represented here? Uh, that uh, uh, that are very near and dear to you, to the hearts of of many, and that's all of these ties that bind us, and that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And how good that is! And one day, perhaps real soon, we're all going to be together. And won't that be a glorious thing indeed? Now, for those who are at the first service, you're going to think that Kurt Matthew and I got together and agreed on the topic this morning. And that the opening that he gave to the first service, that's exactly my message this morning. We, we didn't agree on it, did we? So we have to say that it was the Holy Spirit of God laying this on our hearts. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, your kindness, your faithfulness tender mercies to us, how good it is to know that we are loved with an everlasting love that will never let us go. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would guide and direct our thoughts this morning, for we ask in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. 1 Chronicles 16, you don't often hear a message from this portion, it's a marvelous portion. King David has led the procession, bringing the ark up, the ark of the Lord, up to Jerusalem, and, and out pours this marvelous uh, hymn of praise, and it's uh, it's almost it's very similar to Psalm 105. Which one came first? We can't be sure, but they're, they're very close uh, parallels to the two passages. But here we have this wonderful hymn of praise. Now there, there's something very specific about this psalm, something that is totally absent from it, that, uh, that you encounter in a number of the other psalms. And so it's a legitimate uh, concern, and, and, uh, but it, it's just not here. It, and that is any hint of complaint. No complaint whatsoever in this psalm. It is a psalm of pure praise. David is rejoicing, and that's all that's in his heart. There were other times in his life when there were other things on his heart. But here, he's just praying. Just thankfulness to the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. And on it goes. So I want to pull out of this some points. I'm going to skip over others that are we can be here all day. Looking at all that we see here, I'm going to call this Steps to Thanksgiving. We're going to look at some of the points here that, uh, that I think will lead us upward. I hope they will. Points that uh, we see in this portion. Four different conditions which we can find ourselves. The first condition is 
And I think for all of us, we can admit that there are times in our lives when we feel just about that way. When it comes to Thanksgiving, we're pretty well running on empty, or as we used to say, running on the fumes. Not much left in the tank, and we feel pretty empty. And then, well, we're half empty. We've got some things to be thankful for, but we're looking at all what we don't have and what we want to have, and so things are half empty, or a little bit better, things are half full. Yes, we are aware of our blessings, and we know that we need other things, but and then there's that blessed condition that we find there in Psalm 23. My cup is full and we used to sing a chorus in Sunday school. I don't know if you still sing that, running over, running over. Did you sing that with the kids? Running over, my cup is full and running over. Sometimes we find ourselves in that blessed condition. We're in that, when we find ourselves in that blessed condition, hopefully we can be aware of our brethren who perhaps aren't there. That's why we need each other. There are times when we're just on top of the world, when, when, when we're really almost in heaven, and, and hopefully we can be an encouragement to those who are in that condition that maybe we were there yesterday of running on them. We need one another. David appointed some of the Levites to minister to the Lord, to make petition, to give thanks, and to praise the Lord of Israel. They saw it was the chief. What do we have here? We have a team effort. This morning we saw a team effort. We saw a praise team there and they were working together to draw a worship from the soul. Maybe today someone like Lee Joe will go home and inspire. Maybe he'll sit down and pen a Beautiful song of praise. What about it? And uh, could be. And then let me see. What musical friend could he call on to help him write the music? You know someone who might help him with that? Ashley. Yeah. What if he and Ashley got together and and prepared the music, and then they got the praise thing together and got, and then they could present that to the congregation. That's the kind of thing that's going on in this verse. David was inspired. He wrote the words. And then he got Asaph and I'm sure others of the musicians together and they prepared the music and they got it all there and then they got the Levites to help them and, and they sang it to the people and the people learned it and, and it was a hymn of praise ringing out uh, in the entire city. A hymn of rejoicing to the Lord. Give on to the Lord the glory. Do unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness. This is in that same portion there of First Chronicles 16. What we give unto the Lord as we come together to worship and praise Him. Do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the avenging angel. Now, we're kind of, I want to be careful here. There are times when we are low, when, when things are difficult, and we, I, there is a room, I think there is room in, the, in our experience, in our lives, let's be honest about it, when, 
when we do have complaints, when there are things that are not favorable, when there are things that are hard, and uh, we can share that with one another and be honest with one another and ask for prayer if we're low and we need help. And so we need to encourage and strengthen each other without criticizing because we've all been there. There are hard things. But this grumbling here, this was speaking directly against the Lord. We know as parents with our children, our children will grumble. Our children will complain about certain things. And, and we allow them until they come to that point where they are defying their parents. Now that's different. That's crossing the line. And sometimes as parents you need real wisdom to discern where that is when they've gone from here to here and, and that's not acceptable. And with the Lord, as we come before the Lord with our complaints, we have to be careful that we do not defy the authority of our Heavenly Father. Why, Lord? Now, Lijo just shared with us a situation where it is quite legitimate, I think, to say, why, Lord? Lord, why did you allow that? A precious little baby so longed for, so, so loved, even before that baby was born, and now gone, and said, Lord, why? Now, it's something in my experience, I, I don't, know, don't know about the rest of you, but the Lord, at least up till now, has never come to me first and asked for my wife. If the Lord has done that to you, you tell me about it afterwards. You better not say so to your friends. You can tell me afterwards. I don't know, maybe you would ask for advice. So up till now, the Lord has not asked me for advice. If he did, if the Lord had asked me for advice on this situation, I'd have said, oh, Lord, maybe not. Lord, please don't do that. The Lord doesn't ask for our advice. He doesn't seem to need it. Why, Lord, or even how long, Lord? Lord, I need an answer to my prayer. I need an answer to the situation. Lord, I needed it yesterday. Lord, how long? As children ask on the long trip, are we there yet? Do we ask that in our Christian experience? Lord, are we there yet? Lord, how long? Why? These are legitimate questions to go to the Lord and present them before the Lord, but then we need the wisdom to leave them there with Him. Lord, your will be done. So steps to thanksgiving. Just a few points that I picked out of our portion here. As I say, I skip over some, but the first one is simply do it. Just do it. Give thanks. May this be a New Year's resolution to focus on Thanksgiving. To just be thankful, or as the old hymn says, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done to make a list of his blessings to us. And we can be sure as we make that list that we're leaving out a whole bunch of stuff. And so Lord, please bring to mind all of your kindness to us. All of your goodness, all of your many, many blessings, Lord, help me to remember them all and start making that list and, and be aware of it and then give thanks to the Lord. He deserves it. A thankful heart is a, is a wonderful thing. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Thank you, Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is 
What? Is he? I'm going to try that again. Is the Lord good? Yes. Has the Lord been good to you? Yes. Not everything that happens to us is good. Or it sure doesn't seem good at the time. But he is good. His love endures. For how long? Forever. Hallelujah. His love endures forever. Human love and faith. That's why divorce is so common. A young couple who at one time promised to love each other and be faithful to each other till death you would part it and, and then suddenly and that happens even in the church even between Christians how is that possible? the Lord will never ever say to a child of his I don't love you anymore have you got that? Is that something to be thankful for? Is that something to praise him for? He's never going to uh, say that to me. His love endures forever. Hallelujah. Since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. And so worship God acceptably with reverence and fear. Now notice the progression there. If we come to the Lord to worship Him, we must firstly be thankful. <clears throat> if you come to the, to the Lord with resentment on your heart, and there are people, there are Christians who feel a resentment towards God. I've dealt with them. can't worship. As we come through the doors of Hilltop on the Sunday morning, any feeling of resentment must be left outside. It should have been dealt with during the week. We must be thankful. Come with a thankful heart full of gratitude. And in that condition, we can worship God acceptably with reverence and fear. Enter his gates with what then? Thanksgiving. And his courts. This was a strange feeling. We had the privilege of uh, taking a tour of Israel years ago, and in the in that tour bus that we were in, as we were going up to Jerusalem, over the intercom of the bus, they started playing a glorious hymn about Jerusalem. Oh, I'm not going to sing Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Boy, that choked me up. I felt a flood of emotion going up to Jerusalem. Wow. What will it be when we enter the gates of heaven? Amen to that. The heavenly Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. And so, step to thanksgiving number one. Just do it. Focus on it. Be resolved in this, this new year. If we get there, the Lord doesn't come first. We get to 2020. It will be with a thankful heart. No matter what happens, no matter what the Lord allows in our life, there will be challenges. The Lord said, in this world you will have what? Trouble. What a thing to say. That's life in this sinful world. There is trouble, but there are also so many blessings. 
and so much to look forward to. Number two, call on his name. Call on the name of the Lord. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, what? Will be saved. Now many of you know in, in India, people call on many gods and goddesses, don't they? Many, many different names of the deities that are believed in, whether it be an elephant or a monkey or how many millions of others? I don't think anyone knows. But for us, to call on the name of the Lord God, the creator of heaven and earth, the eternal, all powerful, almighty God. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? Adam lay with his wife again, and she gave birth to a son, and named him Seth, saying, God has granted me another child in the place of Abel, since Cain filled him a devastated family. Two sons, one murdered, the other the murderer. God gave him another son. Seth also had a son and named him Enoch. At that time, this is interesting, the first time this is referenced in Scripture, at that time, man began to call on the name of the Lord. Our children, as we become parents, and then as we become grandparents, we become aware of the future of our children and our grandchildren and what else can we do but call upon the name of the Lord? There he, Abraham, built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Now Abraham in his past life had been a what? An idolater. Abraham worshipped idols back there in Ur of the Chaldees. It's all that he knew. He had been brought up to do that, but then God spoke to him. God called him by name. Revealed himself to him. God can do that. He's doing it today in so many different ways. And now here we see Abraham building an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord, I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. We call on the Lord. We call on his name. So, give thanks. Call on his name. And stay here. We're doing that this morning, and what a blessing music is. My mother was a pianist, she was a music teacher. One of my great regrets in life. As a boy, I couldn't be bothered. I heard my mother was teaching piano to others, and she tried to teach it to me, and I had other things in my head, and I just wouldn't pay attention. I have deeply regretted that since. What a blessing music is. Music that is around the world, in so many languages today. People, Christians, our brothers and sisters have sung to the Lord. The Lord calls us to sing to him, and of course the psalms are all glorious songs of praise. And Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. I mentioned my mother, so I meant to finish that thought. As you get older, you do this. Skip from one thing to another. When my mother was dying, 
and she wouldn't respond to anything else. We would try and talk to her, and she was on that bed. And she, the only thing that would get a response out of her was when we would sing hymns. And when we sang hymns, those dear old hymns, she would respond. That was the last thing there. Her love of music, her love of those glorious songs of praise. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. They sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Notice where this is in Revelation 15. The song of Moses, that ancient song, it's in heaven. They'll still be singing it in heaven. That's how you know that a hymn is really good when it endures, when it keeps on going. That's a good one. I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness and will sing praises to the name of the Lord Most High. Oh, how good to sing to the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. You notice how it's tied to being glad? I will be glad and rejoice in you. You can't be grumpy and, and, and do this appropriately. The one drives out the other. You can't do both. Sometimes we prefer to stay grown. You know, children like that. Sometimes a child is really, really grumpy and you try different tricks with parents, whatever works. Sometimes tickling can work. But uh, whatever it takes. David says, I will be glad. I resolve. I'm going to put aside all my troubles, and David had plenty of them. When he was running from King Saul, who wanted to murder him, he said, I'll be glad. I'm going to rejoice in you. I'm going to sing praise to your name, O Most High. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been what? Have I had troubles? Oh, yeah. Have there been things in my life that have been hard? Times that were so difficult, so discouraging, so disappointing? Oh, yes. Yeah. But the Lord, oh, he's been good. Far better than I ever deserved. I will sing praises to him. Speak to one another. With songs, hymns, and spiritual songs, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, humanly speaking, this doesn't work. Humanly speaking, you can't do this. Humanly. This comes from the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God communing with our spirits. See, this is a spiritual response. Not a physical, carnal response. This isn't the old man, the old sinful nature. This is a new man. Inspired by the Holy Spirit of God to do this. How we need that. Boy, wouldn't that solve a lot of the problems in the world today? Wouldn't that solve a lot of the problems in the church today? If we lived like this, speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Not speak to one another with criticism and complaint and grumbling and I don't like this and I don't like that. And speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and me music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
like the praise team this morning, they were all singing the same song. And they were making harmony together, beautiful harmony. That's what the Lord was doing. Singing the same song. Making harmony, making music to the Lord. Heaven is full of music. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. And we had this also in the first service in Revelation 5. There is a book of singing a new song to the Lord. Actually, there are many verses that speak about this, of the new song. They sang a new song. That's a separate message. There are many different ways to look at that and apply that teaching. All this about the new song. We can't go through this. I just mention that to you for your own study and consider it. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Oh, bless his name. So, give thanks. Call on his name. Sing to him. Glory. In his name. Glory. In his name, an interesting expression. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The glory of our God. There is very little in this world that we would come close to calling glory. Beautiful sunrise, sunset, the colors there in the heaven. Oh, that could be glorious. Only, only the works of God are glorious. The things that men do, no. Shout with joy to God on the earth. Sing with glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. As we return to him, the praise that is his due, that can be glorious. This is what the Lord said, let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches, but let him who boasts boast about this, that he understands and knows me that I am the Lord, who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth, for in these I delight, says the Lord. So what are the things that we delight in? Tells a lot about the people. Uh, about people in general, about anyone in particular. I know a lot, I've interacted with a lot of guys who take great delight in their car. I'm really that. Wow, look at that car. Now, I have other defects to be sure, but that has never been one of them for me, and so I don't understand. To me, a car is something with four wheels and transportation, and that's about it. So, whatever it is that is attractive to you, whatever it is that you delight in, what we see what the Lord delights in. A wise man delights in his wisdom, although we know that the wisdom of this world is what to God? Foolishness. Strong man in his strength, we know what happens to that strength as you get older. No matter how strong you were in your youth as you get to my age, not so much. The riches of this world, well, you leave it all behind. Counts for nothing. Delight in this kindness, justice, the righteousness of God, these are the things that He delights in. May I never boast except in what? In the cross. Oh, my Lord, Jesus Christ, in the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. So, Give thanks, call on his name, sing to him, glory in his name, and lastly, and I'm kind of sticking this one in there, 
I skipped over several references to tell, speak of his uh, of, of his uh, faithfulness to it. Yep. But I've jumped over to this one. Look to him. Where do we look in times of trouble, or even in the good times? Where do we look? We see, you know, this incident, don't you? We shouldn't be critical of Peter. He did something that no ordinary human has ever done in the history of the world. He did. The Lord allowed him to do it. He walked on water. No one here has done that. At least I haven't. He took a few steps. Then he made the mistake of looking down at his circumstances and he started to sink. And there he prayed the quickest, most effective prayer uh, in all of Scripture. What did he say? Lord, save me. No time for lengthy prayer. The Lord reached out his hand and lifted him up. He looked to the Lord. He knew where he needed to look. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. From the snare. Don't look at your circumstances. Don't look at the things of this world. Don't look at your bank account or wherever else you might be tempted to look to, look to the Lord. I lift up my eyes to you, to you whose throne is in heaven. As the eyes of the slaves look to the hand of the master, as the eyes of the maid look to the hand of the mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he shows up his mercy. Oh, to look to the Lord. Where else would we look in this world? Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning and shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Fix our eyes upon Jesus, and one day we will. You believe that? the Lord. I will. That was a little bit better, not much. But we're going to see him. We're going to see him as he is. And when we do, we will be like him. Wow. I am going to be like the Lord. I am going to share in his glory. Yes, this old man, right here. One day I'm going to be glorious. Because I'm going to share in the glory of the Lord, and I hope everyone here has that same blessing for sure. You're going to be like him too. Yes? No? Come on, try it. Yes, one. Yes? Okay, man. Good for you. I knew you could do it. So, step to thanksgiving. Give thanks. Call on his name. Sing to him. Glory in his name. Look to him. And if you like, go to the passage and pick out all of the other points that I didn't have time to get to this morning. May 2020, if the Lord tarry, be a year.